The repair order says the customer is complaining of a slow start or sometimes even a no start condition. A lot of times that's caused by nothing more than a weak battery, but that's not always the cause. So in this edition of the trainer, I'll show you a few ways to test the battery starting and charging system, as well as the connections in that system with a method called voltage drop. The repair order says that the car won't start. What's the very first thing you're going to do? Probably try to start the engine, right? If the engine spins over normally, then you're going to focus your troubleshooting attention on things like, is it getting fuel, spark, maybe even a mechanical issue that's causing it to not start. If the engine doesn't spin over normally, if it spins over slowly or not at all, well then you might want to shift your troubleshooting focus to the battery starting and charging system. Let's start with the battery. The first thing I want to learn is what is the condition of the battery that's currently in the car? What is its state of charge? If it's severely discharged, I'll need to charge it and test it to make sure it's any good before I can use it to test any of the other systems on the car. We're going to do that using a multimeter and a test called open circuit voltage measurement. And it's very simple. We're just going to measure the voltage of the battery. Now nothing's on, keys off, all the lights are off, everything is off. Just go to the battery post and measure and I'm getting 12.83 volts. Now a 100% charged battery will read about 12.6, so that's pretty good. If it's substantially low, then I'm going to want to remove the battery, charge it, and retest it. If the battery's no good, now's the time to put a new one in, and then I can test the condition of the alternator and starting charging systems. Okay, the next test is also using the multimeter. Uh, we're going to do this as a quick down and dirty test of the battery and charging and starting systems. Uh, first we're going to do is have our meter hooked up and then we're going to use on this one the record function. So I'm going to hit the record function and then we're going to go ahead and start the car. Now we're going to start the car uh, three times and let it run for a few minutes on the, on the uh, last try. And then we can check the measurements. Okay, here we're reading open circuit voltage. You can see where that's dropped a little bit. Again, we're looking at a surface charge. We just took a little of that off. And now we're going to hit the record function. Here's our maximum, 14.01 volts. That's charging voltage, isn't it? Now we'll go to check the minimum, 9.90. Well, that's loaded voltage. That's the same voltage you get if you put on a carbon pile load tester and crank down the battery. So this battery is in pretty good shape. It's above the 9.6 minimum loaded voltage, not by much. So we got a little, maybe a little weakness here, but it passes the test. And of course the high size shows that our charging system seems to be functioning normally. Now have we discovered any weak spots? Maybe the voltage wasn't reading like we expected it to see. Does that mean that the battery or, or the system is no good? Not at all, because if you look at where the meter leads are placed, they're placed on the terminals and not directly on the battery posts. Where there's a weak connection between those two, that's a common occurrence, and that could cause issues in voltage drop that would affect how the system operates. So we need to make sure that that's okay, and we need to check some of the other voltage drops in the circuit as well. Let's go through those. Okay, we'll use the negative battery cable as one example. This is home, this is home base, this is where we ultimately have to get to, the, the battery post itself. And then it's going to go through the terminal, the crimp, and then finally to the wire. So ideally, here's my home base, here's my endpoint to check the connection here at the battery. So when I may need a little bit of help, I'm going to hold one on the cable, one on the post, and then I'm going to have to have an associate come up here and try to crank the engine over for me to see what kind of reading we get. That will put a good hard load on this connection because of all the current the starter is going to draw. And that will measure the voltage drop across this point here. If I see something with the starter cranking of, oh, I don't know, half a volt to a volt, uh, I would tend to be a little suspicious of the quality of the contact here. Clean it, tighten it, retest it. You can repeat the same thing on the positive battery side. 
Another common failure point is the battery cable going from the alternator back to the battery. So to test the voltage drop there, we're going to go ahead and access the end at the, at the alternator. Probably right as close to that alternator as we can get. And the other end at the battery. Then we're going to go ahead and start the car, turn on the loads, and measure the drop. A voltmeter reads the potential between its two leads. And voltage drop, anything that we measure across these two points on one side of the circuit, in other words, between the alternator and the battery, that one cable, will be a measure of any resistance that exists in that cable. So again, we're here at the alternator, and the other end, the other voltmeter lead is at the battery. Now let's crank it up, see what we got. With everything running, all the loads on, the fans on high, the headlights are on, even the rear defroster is turned on, with all the electrical loads, there is 0 0.3132 volts worth of voltage drop in that cable. Now again, that cable is going from the alternator to the positive battery. That's what's bringing the feed from the alternator back to the battery. Don't consider this excessive. Don't see any problems here. If I saw more than half a volt, might raise an eyebrow. If you're getting used to voltage drop testing, I will tell you this. Usually if there's an issue, you'll know it. This would have been a marked difference, two, three volt readings instead of just a few tenths variance from what we would consider okay. Now there's the ground side to the alternator circuit, isn't there? So we have to check the ground path as well for any excessive voltage drop. Here I'm just moving the meter leads. The one I did have at the alternator battery cable, I've now moved to the alternator housing. And here back at the battery, Instead of on the positive post, I now have it at the negative post. So the meter reading in between is telling me the voltage drop on the ground side of the circuit. Not bad, nothing to worry about there. Also look for voltage drop issues in the starter motor circuit. Here I have one meter lead attached to the positive battery cable right at the starter solenoid. And the other is attached up at the positive battery terminal. Now here I'm going to set the meter on record, crank it, and then turn it off again and we'll see what kind of reading we get. In this case, measured about a quarter volt or 0.25 volts or 250 millivolts, however you want to look at it. Voltage drop in that cable. Again, for a starter circuit with all that current draw, that's pretty darn good. I'm happy with it. We can do the same thing on the ground side. You have a bad ground when a component bolts directly to the engine. You bet you can, and that's why you want to check with one lead right on that starter housing and then the other up here at the negative battery cable. Just like we did on the positive side for the starter, set the meter on record, crank it over, measure the results. You know, all too often, alternators and starter motors are replaced that are fully functional because of an undiagnosed condition with the cabling of the connections. In other words, the voltage drop test that I just showed you. Now that we went ahead and performed those tests on this vehicle, pretty good uh, bet that the connections themselves are in shape and go ahead and continue on with my testing and be confident that the meter readings that I'm getting are going to be accurate. Well, a lot of shops today are relying on handheld testers like this one to perform their battery starting and charging system tests. Uh, this particular one is made by a company called Enersys. Those are the guys that make the Odyssey battery. And while it was designed specifically to test Odyssey batteries, it will test any other wet cell, standard battery, or absorb glass matter AGM battery. So we can use it to test this car just fine. Uh, long leads, so we can hook up and do the testing from inside the car. Let's go ahead and see what, uh, what we do. First step is to select the battery type. And we're gonna test it in the vehicle. So we'll leave that there. It's a 12 volt charging system. We'll leave that right where it is. Known good battery? Eh, I'm not sure, sure. Let's test and find out. It's a single 12 volt system. It's a conventional battery. And now we're gonna enter the cold cranking, uh, cold cranking amps hour that you can find on, usually on top of the battery. And this is a 500 amp battery. We'll leave that right there. And press go. Now this tool uses what's called micro-loading to test the battery. Others use impedance testing. Either one allows you to test the battery regardless of its current state of charge. So even if this battery was kind of low to begin with, I could find out whether it's any good and whether I can keep it in there or whether I can charge it and put it back in there or whether it's just got to go.
Is this an error? Nope. And now we have to do the load test. Again, the lead's plenty long, so I can bring it right into the car with me. And we'll perform the rest of the test from the uh, front seat. Now let's see what we got. Here we got the meter test readings. 12.83 open circuit voltage, that's above 12.6, that's good shape. Cold cranking amp, it's at 472, it's rated at 500, so that's okay. The battery itself is good, I can go ahead and proceed with any tests. Charging load voltage, that's everything on, 1372. No load, 1383, good numbers. Charging voltage is okay. Diodes, of course, are okay. Accessory loads, okay. Cranky volts, 1052 on this test. A little bit better than that first one we had, but we've been running. The next method I want to share with you on testing the battery starting charging system makes use of your automotive lab scope, your oscilloscope. Uh, maybe laying around gathering dust somewhere in your shop. If it is, go blow it off, set it up, and make a habit of doing this test on every car that comes into your bays. It's a very quick, accurate test, and it'll help you make you more proficient and hooking up your scope and setting the time bases and, and voltage bases so that when you really need it, you'll be ready. Scope set up as a single trigger. As soon as that current threshold is passed, it'll start drawing a pattern. The red pattern is going to be coming from the high amp current clamp around the negative battery cable, and the blue is the voltage measured at the battery clamps, uh, positive and negative. I'm going to let it run for a couple of minutes because I want to see what is the net current flow after about two to three minutes of running right after starting. So we're going to let that screen fill up and then we'll take a closer look at it. So here's the waveform that we captured on, the, on this particular charging system. Blue is voltage, red is current. We can use the tools on, the, on this particular scope to view just the voltage, the blue trace, by eliminating the, uh, the red. And we can use the zoom tools to really take a close look at just the parts that we're interested in. The first is the beginning of the trace. That's the same open circuit voltage that we measured with the multimeter earlier. And now you can see where we have a slight drop in voltage as we turn the key on. And then the key is turned to start and you're going to see what's called inrush voltage. Now this isn't the same as the loaded voltage that we measured with the multimeter or with a conventional battery tester. The scope is so fast that it can measure down into microseconds of time. And what you're seeing here is the amount of voltage that it took for that starter to get everything moving. So that's considerably higher than what you would see as loaded voltage. Use 8.5 here as a minimum spec. What you see here now is the engine is spinning over but has not started yet. And finally, the engine started running on its own. Charging system is now starting to put back in what we just took out. The peak voltage you see here is the same as the maximum we read with our multimeter, the charging system voltage, 13.5 to 14.5 for most vehicles. Now let's move over to the current side of the pattern. Again, using the tools on the scope, I'm going to zoom in on that section that I want to take a closer look at. And just like with that inrush voltage, you're going to see a peak current flow, in this case, almost 600 amps. Again, not unusual. doesn't mean there's a problem with the starter. It's just the scope is measuring that total instantaneous current demand so fast. Okay, now the starter is turning the engine over. Those individual little peaks you see are the pistons moving through their compression strokes. Then the engine starts running on its own. Again, the charging system is starting to put back what we just took out. We're going to let it run for a few minutes to see what that net is. Now remember, the amp clamp is around the ground cable, so we're measuring not only the current coming out of the alternator, but what the systems are taking out from the battery. So this is a net amount. 
Let it run for a couple of minutes and look for net amounts no more than 3 amps. Anything more than that could indicate a problem with the battery that would eventually overheat the alternator and lead to alternator failure. Well, so much for a short video. We've covered quite a bit today. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'm Pete Meyer. I'll see you next month.